everybody, welcome to Everything Martial Arts, the show where we cover anything and everything in martial arts pop culture. In this episode, we're in the press room of UFC 169, chatting with Muay Thai champion and MMA stand-up coach, Crew Phil Nurse. I don't, I don't understand that. I, really don't. I don't think anybody does. And the fans are even saying, like, what happened? I don't know. I don't know what, what they saw, who was watching what. And to say unanimous, not even a split decision. If they said split decision, I'd still be complaining, but mm -hmm. not like a unanimous, unanimous decision. decision. Now, when you're coaching a guy, right, and they go through a bad decision like that, what do you say to them to kind of get their spirits up or to you know, keep them? We'll, we'll, listen, we'll listen to the Twitter or media or whatever it is and see what just, because sometimes there's a corner, you're watching your guy and you're watching him the whole time and you just don't see what the other guy does. Even if he does something good, sometimes you don't see it because you're just so quick to get on your own person. Right. So then you say, you know what? Let's see what other people saw. They're not like bias. Let's see what they did. And we're hearing 95% of the people are saying he won the fight. Yeah. And, you know, and usually that happens when you're lack of experience. But when you've been experienced and being around a fight game for a long time, you can kind of judge your guy winning or losing. You know, you just want to get your guy to know that, to believe in you, to know that when you say you're in front on the fight, like pick this up or do that. You just want him to believe in that. I mean, sometimes this can make your fighter doubt you. Like, you guys said I was in, like, it doesn't mean he's off, but yeah, we, we all thought we were. Yeah, but judging and, and getting a decision wrong can mess up somebody's confidence yes, for sure. It can. You know? Now, when we got back into Lockwood, everybody was like, you guys got robbed. You yeah. won that fight, like, not even close. And then they're all bringing up all these tweets and, like, look at that, or what that person said, or what this person said. They're yeah. Like, you know, like, People are saying one thing or another. You know. So what does he take away from this? Technique-wise, skill-wise, like what, what does he say to himself now? Or what do you guys say to him? It's the catch-22. You've got to knock him out. Of course. You know, at the end of the day, when you have two highly skilled guys, it's not that easy to knock them out. You know, so it's, so just knock them out. Like, like you saw with that other fight, which I think is going to be the fight of the night, the Jamie, Jamie Varner. Varner. Mm -hmm. That was one of those typical like, give it everything you've got, throw it all to the to the wind, and boof, you got knocked out. Yeah. No. And they were both hurting each other too. Right. It's right. like when you want to when you risk knocking a guy out, you also risk getting no. knocked out. Right. And if you look at it at that moment, it looked like Jamie Varner was getting the edge. Mm -hmm. He was getting the edge of the fight, and then to go like I'm gonna finish this, and then boom, you put it to be twitched around. If you're climbing the ladder to the title, do you want to risk everything like in one of those crazy fights? Which is, I don't want to say crazy fight, it's a great fight in one sense, but you want to risk everything? And then, I'm, I'm back down the ladder again now, yeah. to work my way back up again. But I think that's a hard decision to make. But then your instincts take over. Sometimes right. your instincts are just that, like... You know, yeah, so they tell you, control. Mm -hmm. You just like swing. Your instincts take over, and sometimes instincts work out, which is on the other guy's hand, who knocked him out, that was instinct, and it worked out for me. You worked with GSP since the Matt News fight, so that was what, 2007? Yeah. How did you feel about him retiring? I thought he needed the rest. He really needed that rest. He, he had been working every fight, imagine it, every fight that he won, the minute he says, the winner and the champion, George said, yeah, and then it's like, we walk out the octagon, like, okay, this guy's next. The next guy, like, Oh, and it's like a couple of, a bit of a bit of rest, but not rest. And then straight back on it again, like okay, different game plan, different fighter. But then if you just listen to the media and everything that's put around it, then it's like, okay, this guy is the next biggest thing near to you right now. This is a number one contender in the world coming after you. And he's doing this kind of training, that kind of training, he's working hard, he's everything, he's eating like ah, he's gonna take you apart. It's you like your, it. your adrenal glands, like just from a scientific level, your adrenal glands get shot. Oh. It's like imagine being stressed out all the time. Well, that's because he was out. And then after that fight, it's the same all over again. And again, again, for seven years, he was a champion. You know, and a lot of defenses there. You know, and when he said to me, like, I'm thinking I might retire, I'm like, George, I'm not necessarily stuck on the word retire, but you can only need a break. You need to have some time without that. <laughs> Because he wasn't enjoying the training anymore. 
Yeah. Because it wasn't fun anymore. And I, I, I think that if you're not in love with something anymore, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be in it. It's like a bad relationship. You know? It's yeah. just the love still has to be there. You definitely need it. Like, I know he's having a break right now and he's having fun, he's enjoying things. Is he gonna come back? Um, I think so. I do think so, but I wouldn't rush it. I would definitely say, I would tell him, like, don't, don't, don't rush. Just take some time out. Bring that love back to the sport that, like, drived it when I first met you. When I first met him, you were so motivated and driven. And in the end, it became like a burden. Oh, fight again, like, oh, train, like, train hard. Does he and... really get to even have much of a personal life? Not really. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm sure he tries to steal that someplace when he can, a bit of time on his own and stuff. But it's, 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 it's tough. Do you think the media, like the MMA media, do you think we take it too far sometimes? I think it can happen. You know, some people want the story, they want the, the next biggest thing, they want to know the best the information, what's going on, what's this, what's that. And, and if they don't get it, then they'll just put something out there sometimes. Yeah. Put something out there sometimes just to get a reaction, to get someone to talk about something. And it's not accurate. No. And beating somebody up at all. And some people get twisted in there. It's not about that. It's just about the complete sheer chess game, the head game, the technical side, the strategies. That's what I love about it. So it doesn't matter what it was. If you were in love with dance, then you'd be like, you'd have to battle everybody on the dance floor. If you were in love with, you just... I'm laughing because I've done that too. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll drop a head spin or a windmill or a back spin. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it's it. Even turtle. <laughs> I don't know if I can still do it, but... We need to actually get you on camera doing that now. One day. I one can day. do windmill. I can, I can do it right now, but... He can. I need my shell shirt, the one that slips on <laughs> <when> you. <laughs> I, I grip on the floor with this right now. Yeah, I could do that. All right, so before you go, I want to, like, people who know you, and, and one of the things that makes you a, a really phenomenal coach, I know this because he coaches me, um, is that you have this three-belief system, right? Yes. So tell us what the three beliefs are. Oh. <laughs> no, sorry. Just... I know it by heart. So let's right. see if you well, know it. Oh, yeah, let's see if I know it still. Okay. So, no, like, um, and this could probably, well, no, it's not going to work for Johnny because he didn't need it in that situation. I think he did. But my three beliefs are, like, as a fighter, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your coach, and your coach has to believe in you. Those are my three, which are solid. If I didn't believe in him, I won't tell him the right things to do. And if he doesn't believe in me, he won't do what I tell him to do. Right. So those three things have to be in connection. If they're not, in my way, to me anyway, in my way, something is not going to work. Well, Phil, it's a pleasure as always. Thank, Thank you. you so much.